and welcome to another starter video. My name is Stefan Eriksson and today we're going to be taking yet another look at event study. You heard me, we already have an event study video, but this time we're going to do it manually. That is a step-by-step -step approach where we're going to be checking all the things on the way. Last time we looked at the eStudy command, which, well, made everything automatically for us, but there were some, let's say, issues that people would have found here and there sometimes. So now hopefully with this video here, we can make a real step-by-step -step approach and look through all the different details. I would like to also note this is an advanced video compared to many of the other videos, which also means this is a little longer than you're used to from this channel here. So I apologize for that, but I think it is needed. This is yet again also an example data set. We're going to take a look at it, but please note it's an example data set. And of course, there could be mistakes here, but I think it's been checked pretty thoroughly so. I would be pretty confident this is all correct. Now, so let's just get started with the actual things today, shall we? Now, first let's take a look at our example data. What do we have with us here today? We have a nice data set here where we have a market return first by MKT and four different companies, FB, AAPL, GE, and BA. And I'll leave it for you as an exercise to know which companies I'm talking about here, but you should know. I hope, otherwise, go figure it out. They each have an event ID here from one to three. And of course, up here we have zero because that's the market. And we don't really need that in the moment. As you're gonna see, we're gonna be moving it around a little bit. But what we're gonna be doing here, we're gonna be generating each of our event days, and then we're gonna be running all the estimation to calculate CAR, C-A-A-R. So let's get going, shall we? So now we have all these things here. There's a little note here you can also read here. I hope it also helps that everything here is zoomed in a little more than usual because, well, I want everything here to everybody here to be able to read the notes and be able to replicate this for your own study. Always make sure you take a look at your data first. So now I divide this in nice two components today and we're gonna start with the event date setup. And then afterwards we can look at the estimations. So first, we need to generate a new variable for the market returns. Oh, I should maybe also mention, you're gonna see a lot of commands here that I may go over pretty briefly, but that's because we covered them in other videos. If something is not clear to you, feel free to go and check it out in one of the other videos. But first, we're gonna be generating a market close, MKT close variable for each of the event dates up here. So you see here, we generated for the first one. We're gonna spread this across to all the other event IDs, so all the other companies in our data set, such that we can drop this MKT variable like we did here. Because now, instead of having a separate, well, separate observations, they're now tied to each of the different firms so they have the same market variable. It's gonna be very neat when we're gonna do some estimations, otherwise it's actually pretty hard. You may already have this in your data set, but if not, this is one way you can do it, of course. And now we can dive in to generate the actual event date, shall we? Always make sure everything is sorted. There we go. And then of course we can, for each of the company, so by company ID, we can generate a date variable here, which numbers the dates from one up until the observation number. This little underscore N is what does it. It's a counter. So you see for the first company it goes to one, all the way up until 253, then comes a new company and it starts over. That's what it can do when we do this by command. So that's quite neat, I think. So for each of now of the, each of these companies, we can create a target variable, which is basically, well, the event date. You, of course, have your own uh, literature you've studied. You know when the different event dates are for your sample. Here, of course, we just target a few event dates here, okay? So you can see the event date information here. We're gonna translate that to a nice different variable we can use for our estimations and to generate the rest of the things we need. So we generate for each of this here. So now it's gonna be a dot everywhere except for the event date itself. So you see here it copies over 236 here. And likewise for the next company in line, it will copy over here for 163. Oh, not too bad. And I'll do the same for the last two companies, I promise. We of course spread each of these values the same way we spread here with the market close variable here via each end, such a useful command. We can now drop this target variable. There's no need to keep it any longer. We're gonna be generating enough variables as it is, so it's nice to do a little house clean, housekeeping now and then. Now we need to generate the difference between the target day and the day you're actually at. So we just subtract these two variables from each other, 
calculating the new diff variable. And you can see zero on the date and then minus before and plus after. This helps when we now define our event window here, which we set to minus and plus two around the date here, as you can see. Depending on what event window you want and everything, you can always just go and change these variables to make it, well, customize it for your own use. And of course, we can do the same now here to make a new length of these event windows from each of these companies. This just double checks if indeed is five. This may or may not be the case if the event window is towards the beginning or the end of your data, in which I highly recommend you go and get some more information. That is more data. The more, the merrier. Now, with that said, we can of course generate the estimation window for each of these companies here. Yes, yet another variable, which starts 10 days before in this case, and of course goes to up to 200 days prior, right? So for the first company here, it goes all the way back to minus 210, all the way starting here from minus 10, or in next case, minus 11, of course, for 200. It may not be the case for each of the companies, so you can always go and check how many observations do we have within this window. The first one, yeah, we do have 200, that's fine, but the next second, or the second company, we only got 152. For the next, 185, and finally 200 again. Overall, I wouldn't say this is a problem at all with these numbers, they're still quite high, but if you're in a case where it's too low for your liking, you may wanna go and get some more information that is more data, of course. We're gonna replace all these dots here with zeros so we can actually use this. Very simple to do with the replace command. We fill them in here. There are all the missing values, which in stats, of course, are dots, so now zeros. We can then, of course, just check these event windows to see if they are long enough for our liking. We get this nice little overview here with the sum command. So in our case here, we are perfectly fine. But suppose there is an issue, you can, of course, go and tabulate to get a look at who's under and then you can say okay if they're below the threshold we don't want them at we can then drop them we set the threshold here for 100 for this and event window at five i know you can set the threshold where you want but in this case here we say everything is just fine because remember not all of them are 200 but none of them are certainly below 100 so that's all okay i would say this now here finishes the first part where we set up our event date we can now go on to calculate the returns. And here in the returns, we have to actually start by declaring Stata. Hey, this is a panel data set. And contrary to popular belief, Stata is actually quite stupid in the sense that we have to tell Stata this is actually a panel data set, otherwise Stata wouldn't know. And that's what we can do in this particular case here. Standard setup, you can also use TS set. You can go and check out the video on that if you wait, if you may or want. Now we can generate the returns here, and we're gonna do it just via simple returns, and doing so should come with no surprise that we have four missing observations, and that is one for each of the company. Likewise, we can go and generate the market return here. Again, simple returns. You can also opt for continuously compounded ones, but this is perfectly fine. We're gonna go now here and set up a loop. And loops are always a little more complicated than usual here but we're gonna be generating the normal returns here. So that's what we try to capture via these estimations in the loop. You of course change the number corresponding to how many companies you have in your sample. We got four, you may have 40, then you just change it. We need to set it up because we're gonna capture returns. We're gonna also capture residuals. And then of course, we can just set up an ID to loop over this ID. And of course, when you run entire loop, remember to mark everything otherwise this is not going to work very nicely so running this here should come with four different estimations so to capture these returns so we can now see what is the betas we have here because our market model in this case is just a standard cap m model we see here 181 for the first one a 136 rounded 128 and again uh, yeah 128 rounded all which betas here are above one, so they go in the same direction to market, but a little more volatile than a market. Perfectly fine. We now have what we need in order to generate the abnormal returns. And that we, of course, simply do by taking the returns and subtract normal returns. Then you are left with the, well, abnormal part. That should not be too difficult, because now we can also put this all together and calculate the cumulative abnormal returns. Not too bad. 
we can of course go and take a look at it. I think that is a very good idea. So we go over here, we look all the way at the end here, and of course we have to go down around the event day here to see, hey, this is the cumulative one for the first company, and we can go and check for the other remaining companies if we like. Here there's a little discussion about what standards we should use. There are two different options here. I'll leave it to you which one you would prefer. But in this particular case here, they will give, they will also in regular cases give practically the same answer. So it doesn't really matter in this case here. And of course, you can always double check it here because now we have the first type, we have the second one here as well. And we can just check the correlation between the two to really see that there's not much difference here at all. So that is quite nice. They give virtually the same result. But of course, note, as I said here, market model as your estimator. If you check the data, you will see that these are virtually the same. Hence, we can use either one won't really make a difference. Some statement here I know, but in this case here, always to go double check what you want. Always check the literature back. What do you think is the correct thing? I also know there's been some literature on this already in here, and I will see if I can put a link below in the description of the video so you can also go and check it out. Now we have everything set here and of course we can drop our intermediate variable that we do not need. Again, a little housekeeping to keep a little more control about what we have. So not so bad. We can now generate our standard test statistic here. And of course for the formula, well, look back in your statistics books. Otherwise, well, just believe me. Oh, believe me in this case. I think so, yeah. And in this particular case, we can now, now list for each of the company IDs, we can list the cumulative, abnormal returns, and the test statistic. And we see here, for this little overview here, all the, all the cumulative returns, or abnormal returns, sorry, sorry, and then the test statistics. And here it looks like we're not going to be rejecting anything today with these little values. But before we go anything, we can now check whether these cumulative average abnormal returns, because that's what CAR actually stands for, are statistically different from zero. And that we can do just via a standard regression methodology here. We use robust standard errors because of course we don't want to have any problem with heteroscasticity. And yet again, if there were none, they would just collapse to the regular ones, so no problem in any case. We see here, we get a t-value of 117. That does not produce a p-value for us to reject our null hypothesis. So they're not statistically different from zero in this particular case. You even see the coefficient actually rather small in this case here. And now what you can do in anything here, in particular case, you remember this is an example data set, but we want to use the male dummy to see whether this also could drive differences among the cars for the different companies. So we generate our little dummy here as well. And we can simply insert it here into our regression from before. And we notice in this particular case, no significant differences to be observed. And of course, this is where you can also put other things in to see whether what drives in your particular sample the different cars. So I hope this has been useful to you because we are now at the end of today's video where I have walked through step by step all these individual components here for a nice event study. So that was all. I hope you had a good class here today in Stefan's classroom, and I hope to certainly see you back for another class here in Stefan's classroom. Bye bye, everyone.